Right, this is um, AQA Psychology uh, and in this particular video we're looking at the topic of stress and how we measure stress. Um, we've already looked at uh, self-report measures and if you haven't watched that video I'd urge you to do that first because it's going to talk a bit more about reliability and validity and explain that um, which I'm not going to go over in this video but hopefully I'll manage to do a little bit more comparison between the two in this video. So, how do we measure stress using a physiological measure or a physical way of measuring stress? Um, the, the key way that we're going to look at in this video is called the skin conduct conductance response, otherwise known as SCR. Um, and the way this works is what it's actually looking at is the number of, sw of sweat glands in your skin that are being activated. So if you remember, as part of your autonomic nervous system, when your fight or flight response is activated, one of the things that that does is it activates your sweat glands. Um, and so what happens is your skin uh, then becomes more, it's able to conduct more electricity than it can because it's um, because the sweat glands have been activated. So what the um, SCR does is it actually um, measures the it uses electrodes which and applies a very very small current to your skin and then measures how much electricity your skin is able to conduct. So you would wear a couple of electrodes normally on your hand like this um, and and then the the signal will be sent to a computer and picked up and measured. Um, and you can see this graph here, this is an example, uh, and this has got all sorts of explanation on, but you can see in, in red here, you've got a stimulus being given, and then you've got the reaction where you can see the, the conductance of the skin going up. Okay, it's actually measured in something called micro siemens. Um, and the first of all, what would be done is you would sit down for a while um, just so that you're completely calm so they can measure first of all what your like general baseline is before they start looking at what happens in response to a stimulus or when you're stressed. Um, and so then they can look at, on a screen at what kind of stress level or how whether that's changing in uh, response to a stimulus. So that's skin conduct conductance response. Uh, what other ways are there to measure stress? Let's have a look. Um, just a couple of, and we're not going to do these in any detail. One way is to look at blood pressure. Um, where you can often high blood pressure is linked to those people who uh, have been suffering from chronic stress. Um, equally, urine samples can be taken. Um, different. These are all different, remember, physiological methods. So we've looked at sweat glands, blood pressure, and then urine samples, you would measure the basically the level of stress hormones that you can find in the urine sample. And that should show how much um, stress hormones have been circulating in the body in a particular time period. So let's look at some evaluation then. Let's start off with validity. If you remember, that's is it measuring what it's supposed to measure? So the first problem is that it can't differentiate between the body's arousal due to stress and other reactions. Um, someone found this in a, a study, sorry, this was by Kalfa et al. Uh, in 2002, uh, where they basically used skin, the skin conduction response response, uh, sorry, skin conductance response, SCR, um, and they basically played different types of music to people and got the same response, the same SCR readings for fear and happiness. So it can show that more ar arousal is being experienced in the body, uh, but it can't, it, it can't say like what that arousal is. It can't differentiate or distinguish between different types. So that's the first problem. So when it's giving a, a high level reading, that might not actually be stress. It might be a different emotion. Um, a good thing, however, is that um, SCR isn't open to like bias or distortion in any way. There's not going to be someone interpreting something differently. Um, it's it's nice. It's a clear, straightforward reading, isn't it? Um, that's not going to be distorted. Um, it measures stress in the moment. So it's not someone looking back in the past month and saying, oh, I've had these many um these many stressful events uh it's not so it's not relying on retrospective data in that way you can see in action what is that person's stress level 
It's also based on scientific data about the body's response to stress. That's good. It means we're not having a number of these problems that we get with self-report methods like social desirability bias and so on. It's it's um, you do the measurement and you get the, the scientific data uh, straight there. So it's accurate um, and valid. Um, however, it isn't a complete measure of stress. And this is one of the key problems that actually um, stress isn't just physical, is it? We There's a, a really key important element to stress that's psychological and it's basically completely ignoring all of that. Um, so, yeah, it, it fails to consider how we respond psychologically to stress. In terms of reliability, um, the... Well, SCR is objective, isn't it? It's an objective fact. It's not going to be interpreted differently by one person and another. We have a reading and that was the level, straightforward. However, on the other hand, what it isn't is very reliable because when people have run uh, research where they look at the same person on different occasions within uh, the same day um, or they're comparing one person to another measurements can really differ so even when you're looking at the same person on the same day just at a different time the measurements can be really different so that suggests that it's not actually that consistent a measuring tool so that's a really big problem um on the other hand it is really useful so if you think about the fact that self-report methods you can't um, use self-report methods with kids you can use self uh, sorry you can use physiological methods with kids um, you can uh, use SCR you can measure urine samples and so on you can use equally you can use it with animals um, but also you can use it to treat stress so there's something we'll look at uh, later in the topic called biofeedback um, where people basically have readings about the level of stress they're experiencing and they learn to to reduce the bodily arousal that they're um, experiencing and so this is one way that the uh, feedback can be provided and we'll go in don't worry if you don't understand that yet because we'll do it you'll understand it once we've done that topic I don't want to go into detail here um, so I think I've covered a, a couple of these um, already, but I haven't talked about this last um, research uh, study, which was by Gunnar et al. And this was where they um, used, this was looking at urine samples rather than SCR, but this is just supporting research where they looked at three and four year olds and found that the higher levels of cortisol were found in the, the children who were experiencing more stress, for example, at, at a daycare where they were, were being stressed out. So that's quite nice supporting research. Um, and I would suggest that you uh, strike out in your booklet the CAMARC study, and we'll talk about that in the lesson as to why that is. Um, so, but don't, I wouldn't make any notes on that one if you're using your booklet. Okay, that's the end of this one.